Hey, good morning, good afternoon. Um, it's my pleasure to work with uh, Arshad today to make an introduction to computer guided implantology. And this will be based really on um, working with Access Guide, which is a program which has developed long time ago and working on CBCTs and working on spiral cities. Okay, so um, doing all that, we are going to focus on the imaging part of the system, of the computer guided implantology system. So for this, I will, um, I will go forward. I will go forward with that. Yes, we will focus on image treatment. Image treatment, why? Because I know that an, a big number of dentists that I'm meeting every day, um, they understand a little about the guides and how to make a surgical guide, how to use a surgical guide, but they have no idea uh, that all this is coming from imaging uh, system. And images needs to be understood how to manipulate image how to manage images, how to, to be uh, uh, careful about using some images which are not accurate and where the lack of accuracy is coming from. So I will focus with Ken today on uh, the image treatment. Um, and you will understand that it's not that simple to understand uh, computer guided implantology if you do not understand about um, the, the way you need to uh, manage images. Please co close your microphone because we don't hear. Okay, so uh, I'm going to try to help you understanding what's the difference in between volume rendering and surface rendering. This is the basic thing to understand. If you do not understand what's the difference in between volume and um, surface rendering, you cannot understand computer guided implantology. I'm very clear on that. So I will give you an example to show you how we can go from volume rendering, which is something that you have in all existing software on CBCTs, for example, all of them are volume rendering. But is it enough? What it's going to give you? What it's not going to give you? And how far can you go with the volume rendering? I will explain to you why we go from one to the other. So the second point will be understanding conversions and segmentation. What is a conversion? You are converting it to what? Into English, into Arabic, into Islam, into what? So what is a conversion? Okay. If you do not know what is a conversion, you cannot understand what's 3D computer guided implantology. The conversion is the conversion from a 2D image into a 3D image. And there is a way to do that. And you need to understand how to do it because this in some cases is very tricky. We are going to show you some cases on that. The conversion is mandatory to understand. It is not mandatory to do it. Me, I don't do my conversion. My conversion are done by ANPA but I know how to do a conversion and I know the threshold and I know the limitation of a conversion. So we will work on that and I will explain to you what is a conversion and how far can we do and how far can we trust or maybe do not trust on a conversion because we are not going to work on 2D, we are going to work on 3D. So if the conversion is not good or if there is some issue in the native data, then we will not be able to work correctly on converted or converted images. And then I will help you understanding what, what is a, segmented, a segmentation. Segmentation, as you can understand, is cutting a 3D image in small parts. We segment the image. We segment not the 2D image. It's impossible to do. We segment the 3D image. And I'm going to show you, and Arshad is going to help me to show you how we can segment images and what benefit we can get from good segmentation. So when I send an order to, uh, to Arshad to, to treat my images and to prepare my images, uh, when I do that, I ask him, I want a mask of 
the chief number, this, 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 this. I ask him what I want as segmented images. He's not deciding, I am deciding about that, okay? And when he has the order to segment, he's able to segment based on what I am ordering. And we are going to work on that for you to understand exactly what, uh, is, uh, what we are doing in conversion and segmentation. Then we will spend some time understanding um, what is under a reconstruction threshold. Because you have to know that a CBCT or a scanner giving you a DICOM will not give you one kind of image. You will have an infinity kind of images in 3D starting from the same 2D. And this is what we are going to talk about how we can manage and how we can treat the image from 2D to 3D. And this is based on layer by layer reconstruction or threshold reconstruction. And we are going to focus on threshold reconstruction. To understand this, uh, we've been selecting a few uh, real cases um, which have been done uh, by uh, Ashad. And these uh, cases will show you how, how far we can go, and we'll show you also in some cases how difficult it is to treat what we receive from the clients of Anpar. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go further now. You know what is the aim of the webinar, and uh, we've been starting making some kind of uh, uh, answers about this. We go forward now. So uh, what we are going to do we are going to do the next image. And we are going to go to understanding the volume rendering and the surface rendering. So the, there is an impacted tooth here, okay? It is not a wisdom tooth. It is a second lower right molar on the young patient. The patient is uh, 16 or 17 years old. And we've seen that on the CBCT. And the mother is asking me, what are we going to do with this tooth? Are we going to remove it? Are we going to leave it? Are we going to place it on the arch? And when I look at the OPG, I cannot answer. So I, I, uh, I am going to go to a different level. I am going to go to a CT scan. So this is a CT scan. At that time, I was using a Simplant. I am being part of developing a Simplant program with Materialized Company, and I use this program. And using that, I see that the nerve is going here, the root is there, but on 2D, on 2D, I am not able to take a decision. So let's say I am going from OPG to the 2D, and still I cannot make a decision. So let's go now to the different level. I am going to go to the next step, which is the, um, which is the, the volume rendering. Volume rendering, you have this kind of image in all the existing software that you have with a CBCT. All of them, 100% of them, they give you this kind of image, which is a, uh, an image, uh, a dynamic image rebuilt in volume rendering. Volume rendering, this means that you have kind of pixels in the air and all these pixels give you this kind of image. I see that there is something here. There is an impacted tooth, <coughs> but I cannot tell you because this is the real question. What is the relationship in between the roots and the nerve? I can draw the nerve, but I cannot see more than that. In 2D, I cannot make the decision. In 3D volume rendering, I cannot make the decision. So this is why we need to go to the next step. The next step is the surface rendering. The surface rendering in between the volume rendering and surface rendering is the fact that you have some triangles and these small triangles you see are reshaping the surface of the teeth and the surface of the gum. 
And these triangles, when it's very deep like this, it's more dark. The triangles are very, very narrow. And when you have a flat surface like here, the triangles are just bigger. We call that STL, which is stereolithography, or STL is known as standard tessellation language, okay? So tessellation, what is tessellation? Tessellation means that we are dealing like with tiles. We put tiles on the floor, we intricate the tiles in, inside one, inside the other, and we rebuild the full floor in a good way. This is what we are doing with the triangles. The triangles are rebuilding the surface uh, and not the volume, the surface. And doing that, we can lay on this surface and we can manipulate the surface. And this surface in 3D will make images that we call mask, okay? So we go from the, uh, the OPG to the 2D reconstruction, and then we go to the volume rendering, and then we go to the surface rendering. Follow me, it's important. So now I go to, it's almost the same kind of image, but this image is not a volume uh, rendering image, it's a surface rendering image. So what you see is not pixels in the, uh, in the sky, you see uh, um, uh, triangles which are reshaping the teeth and the bone. So let, let me show you now what we can see. So we move around with this image. This image is a whole image. It's in one piece with a surface. We can see by transparency, looking by transparency, it looks like a volume rendering image but it's not a volume rendering image. It's a surface rendering image shown with transparency, which is fully different. And now we've been making a mask of the tooth. And you see when I remove, I toggle out the bone, I can see the tooth. And I can see the root of the teeth and I can see the root and the relationship with the nerve. And I see in this case that the roots are not hooking the nerve, they are flat and they are from one side to the other side, but it is safe to remove the tooth or to put it in the right position with an orthodontic treatment. Now I can make the decision. I could not make my decision based on OPG. I could not make my decision based on a CT scan in 2D. I could not make my decision based on the volume rendering. I could only base my decision on the 3D rendering with a conversion and a segmentation. We've been converting from 2D to 3D and we've been making a segmentation. We segmented, we've been making a, a, a mask of the impacted tooth. And doing that now, I know exactly what I'm going to do because I can, I can do it in a safe way. So what we did in this case, we just elevate, just elevate a flap I have been putting two buttons, orthodontic buttons. The orthodontist has been working on that. He's been pulling the, the tooth out, okay? And um, after a while, the tooth was perfectly aligned with the other teeth. And we've been doing that in a safe way. And there was no issue about taking any risk of damaging the nerve. So this is the way we work. And this is the way um, we should avoid making mistakes. So I'm going to show you, uh, no, uh, Arshad is going to help me. We are going to show you a free example of CBCT programs. We have a lot of programs. You have a plan maker, you have a program. You have a new term, you have a program. You have Philips, Spiral CT, <coughs> we have program. Whatever it is, CBCT or Spiral CT, it is the same. You have programs to see your data, your native data. But to see your native data, you will see them in 2D and you will see them in volume rendering. So let me give you some example and let me explain to you what is the limitation of that. So we are going to open a program and this program is a plan makeup program, okay? So Romexis. So Romexis is working on that. You have different cuts like this and this. You have to know that the CT scan is only this. The CT scan is a series of actual views. 
the views are coming from the chin. And when we go up, we go to the roots and the crowns, okay? So this is the CT scan, only the CT scan. So based on this, they are making reconstruction in this way. So they, there is this way to see the, um, uh, and we don't, we don't work like this. And there is a reason for that. I'm going to explain to you. So you see the right and left side, okay? What you see here that there is, uh, there is an infection here and you can go up and down. But for me, it's very difficult to understand where we are. When I am here, where I am, where I am, okay? In 2D, where I am in 3D. And then there is this image and this image is the image you have in 3D. How can I work with this kind of image? How can I plan an implant? How can I fabricate a surgical guide? This is just not possible. I would like to point out something now. When you make whatever you make, a CT scan, a CBCT, a spiral CT, put a spacer in between the upper and the lower arch. You will separate the teeth. You will not contaminate the image of the occlusal surface, and you will be able to do much more things than what you can do with such an image. Don't imagine that this is a bad image that I selected to show you. This is 99% of the image we have from the CT scan coming from uh, Plomeca and based on this. So I have nothing against Plomeca, but the only thing is that I cannot work on that to make computer guided implantology. Okay, maybe you can make something else. I don't know what, but not what we are talking about. So um, this is in, in one example. I can, I can give you a lot of examples. I'm going to give you only three examples. I take one more example with Newton. Newton is for sure uh, a very, very good and very high level and very good quality uh, software, okay? Probably, in my opinion, one of the best existing on the market. So Newton is this. So in the same way, you have the images coming from the actual image here on the upper left side from the chin. You go up, you see the entry, the entry of the nerve here and here on the other side when you move up and down. Okay. So you go to the roots, uh, you go to the missing teeth, and you go to the bone, and then you go to the opposite on the upper. Okay. So what you have here also you have a certain number of images that you can travel. So now in this, in this software, the difference is that you know where is that because it's identified here, it's identified here. So it's easier for you to know how you manage and, and how you're going to move around the arch. The other one is the orthogonal. It's again the same as this one, but in a different way. And the final one is the 3D. So the 3D is this. And look at something. When I move the 3D, you know the pixels. So you lose the quality of the 3D as soon as you are moving around. And this is something when I developed my program, which is called Axis Guide, I did not want it to have this kind of bad images. So we've been changing the, um, um, the algorithm to work in 3D and without losing the 3D when we are moving around the 3D. So yes, it's a 3D, but it's a, again, it is a volume rendering 3D. I cannot remove, I cannot toggle out this tooth and check how is the bone if I want to make an implant in the exact right position at the time of the extraction. I cannot do that. I can do it only on a program when you can make a conversion and when you make a segmentation and in implant planning. Even if they give you a, 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 a library of implant in these programs, you will not be able to transfer that to the patient's mouth using the surgical guide. And this is the big issue. So even with very high quality, they are not oriented to uh, computer-guided implantology. They are oriented to image, uh, image in 2D and a little in 3D using a volume rendering. So I hope you, uh, this is more clear for you what we can do and, uh, and what's the limitation on working on these images. 
So let's see another one. And this is my last example, but um, we have more than that if needed. Um, and this is one which is coming from the spiral city. So the spiral city, on one side, you have the image, but you cannot move the image like this. You cannot rotate the image. So it is blocked and you can rotate by default by 30 degrees or 90 degrees or 45 degrees. And this is the only way. To do. So this is not what we want. And, um, and, and what we have is here, you have, um, you have, uh, you can go up and down from the nose, you can go down and you can go, and this is just actual images. And you know at which level you are, but by far, this is not enough. This is not what we are looking for. We don't want to work on, on that. So this is done with a spiral CT and the other one were done with a CBCT. The big difference, there are two main differences that you need to know. There is another one, there are three differences. The first difference is that on a spiral CT, you have a wide field of view because in one field of view, you have all that. You have all the image in one field, okay? In spiral CT, in CBCTs, you have an option and it's coming from a limited small field of view, which can be around five centimeters. And in five centimeters, you cannot get the full arch. So you need to make it twice or three times, and then you stitch them. And we have cases where the stitch are wrong. So we see that there is a mistake when we are stitching images using several images on the same CBCT. So this is first point that you have to be very careful. What are you talking about when you are talking about a, a CBCT? Is it a wide uh, field of view or a narrow field of view? If it's a narrow field of view, you go into complicated things. If it's a wide field of view, it will be better. The second big point is that today, maybe in the future it will change because there are new developments in China. But today, there is no relationship into, in between the uh, Hounsfield value of what you have on a CBCT and the uh, bone resistance that you have in real. You have that. This correlation exists on the spiral CT, but not exist on the CBCT today. The third point is, and that's very, very important, you have a lot of scattered images in the CBCTs. And what you see in the CBCTs volume rendering in 3D, there is always already um, an algorithm to remove the scattered images coming from the metal you have on the parts. Even the 3D um, volume rendering that you have on the, uh, on the CBCT program is giving you errors because there is no real conversion possible, and there is a big, big scattered on that. And if you have a case to do with a lot of um, a, a bridge and metal and all that, prefer to do it on a spiral CT, you will get less scattered images instead of a CBCT. If it's a partial case with few metal in the map, you can use your CBCT with no problem. Okay, so let's go to the next step. Next step, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you um, and, uh, the way to work and to set up the different levels of reconstruction. Uh, we call that the threshold reconstruction and we are going to work on different thresholds. So let me give you a very simple example. We start with this case, we have the DICOM and we draw, and Arshad is working on that. I just explained to you what he's doing. So he's putting several points and voila, and you have a panoramic X-ray. So we just keep that. We don't work anymore on that. And we are going to make a segmentation. So we click on here on the bone. You see the bone here? By default, I set up the bone reconstruction at 500, Hounsfield units. 
And I set up on this program, which is called Axis Guide, the upper reconstruction at 250 Angsfield unit. This means that when you click here on the lower, on the, on the yellow image, all what is higher than 500 ounce field unit will be included in the 3D. We are fabricating the 3D based on a fresh oil. Okay, so let's go. Cam is clicking there and the fresh oil is 500. So you see here that you have an image of the bone, you have an image of the teeth, everything is higher than 500 ounce field units. And now we are going to separate the teeth from the bone. So we are going to make another mask. We call that a mask. It's a group of pixels. And we go, we select an, uh, a color. And we go to the teeth. So now going to the teeth, so can you just remove that? And we are going to open the teeth. So we hide that and we are going to make a mask of the teeth. So now we are going to work with three different levels of the threshold of reconstruction. Be careful. The first threshold, what is the threshold you select? One, 1,526, 1,026. Okay, this is a low level, okay? So we click on that and we expect, we expect to have, we expect to have the teeth on that. But not only we have the teeth, so let me show you now. We have the teeth and Arshad has been including the teeth, which is good, but now he needs to clean up all the bone. So he's going to use a lasso and he's going to clean up the bone layer by layer. And it takes time. And it takes time. In some cases, it takes one hour to remove all that things. So instead of doing that, because it's taking time to remove all the, all the, all the bone without touching the, the roots, we are going to do it in a different way. We are going to add a new mask of the teeth and Arshad is going to select a high now. High like 2000, high like 2000. And you will see the difference we have in between this one and this one. What do you expect? Me, I expect that you are going to get a more bone. So you click, you click, and you have the 3D reconstruction. So you have less root and you see the, the crowns. Why? Because all the crowns have a Hounsfield unit value higher than 2000. We've been removing the roots. We've been removing the bone. We've been keeping only the, uh, the crowns because the crowns are made out of enamel and enamel is much stronger than the roots. So to make the case, we are not interested in that. We're interested in a, another uh, mask. So we make the good mask now. We select the mask. So Arshad is selecting another mask is selecting another color and is going to select 1,690. So this is experience. You need to experience that to know how to do. He's been doing thousands of cases and doing thousands of cases he knows how to do. So now he's going to remove the excess of bone with the lasso and he's going to show you the roots. And you see, it's clean and nice and easier and much easier to do because he's been selecting the good Ansfield value, the, the good height for the reconstruction. And doing that, you save, of course, a lot of time and you don't touch the root and you can remove all this. So he's going to show you how to remove it. We do it in real. I want you to understand in real what, what they are doing when, when they are treating the images. 
Of course you can do it. Of course you can do that. Me, I don't do it because I have no time to do that, but I know how to do that. And, um, and, and, and we, uh, we, we know exactly what is the job they are doing when they are doing that. So now you have one image, you have one image and I'm going to find it. You are this image and this image is just great for me. So what we are going to do now, we are going to do a Boolean. We are going to use a Boolean. Uh, what is a Boolean? Boolean is something in between two things. So you have one thing minus one thing, or, my, or one thing plus one thing, or one thing intersection to another thing, okay? In this case, we are going to uh, show this. This is the bone and the teeth, and we are going to make a Boolean starting from all this image minus the teeth. So Ashad is going to do that. So you do to select that Boolean minus the teeth. Okay, you calculate. And now look at that. You have the new image showing that you have the teeth and you have the bone. Okay, why it's interesting to, to get that? Let's say it's a case, it's a case where I want to remove the teeth uh, and I want to see what kind of implants I can make. So I make this, I can toggle out that, okay? I remove that and that, okay? I can toggle in and out, and then I see what is the rest of the alveolus inside the bone that I have. Based on this, I can take a decision. If I want to place an implant in that, I know if the implants will be wide or narrow, how I can stabilize it, and this is what I can do, toggling on and off a mask of the teeth, which has been done um, doing that. So you see that we have several levels of making, uh, making the image. And more than that, Arshad, you are going to show what we, we have when we are making, uh, when, when, we, when we want to, to see more. So when we want to see more, we will see, uh, we will see all the gun. You can check that now. And we, we check this, we change the color. And we are going to see the skin. We are going to see the skin. We are on a CBCT, but we see the skin. We don't see only the bone. If you talk to a radiologist, the radiologist is going to tell you, oh no, the CT scan is done for the bone. But no, I show you it's done for the skin also. So you can work on that. We've been working extensively uh, uh, around 20, 20 years ago, trying to make a new smile on the 3D like this. And there are companies now working on that, making what they call the 4D, when you move around and you change the, the smile and they are transferring the smile. And this is based on what we've been doing a long time ago with that, okay? So I show you that starting from a CBCT or starting from a spiral CT, you can work on the teeth, you can make masks, you can toggle them on in and out, and you can even make the reconstruction done on the soft tissue. This is what I wanted to show you. I am going to go back again to uh, the PowerPoint presentation to show you a few things in more details um, to explain to you how we need to work. So step by step, I give you the information. Huh? So, uh, uh, close myself. So, uh, to work on images, you need to have a problem, a program allowing you to start from DICOM. The DICOM can be single or, or multi DICOM. What it means? It means that a DICOM can be a file which is called DCM or a folder. And this folder will include maybe 300 to 500 different slices. The slices are actual slices, horizontal slices, if you want, okay? And this can come from a spiral CT 
or a CBCT. You will select the good one because now you know how to do it. We can make also a double scan. This means that we will, and this is in case of a full reconstruction, when you have a denture, full denture. We take a CBCT or a spiral CT with the denture of the patient in his mouth. Every time we ask the patient to bite on cotton rolls to make the opposite separate so there is no um, uh, contra uh, indication of reading in a proper way the surface of the teeth. So we make a double scan and your program should allow you to uh, overlay one scanner to the other scanner, the scanner of the denture alone outside of the patient's mouth. So this is the way to do. And we included, of course, in my program, we've been including that. So the next step is what? The next step is, is to go to optical scanner. Of course, we can uh, use a scanner, a digital scanner. So I, I have been using a scanner since long time. And we can use the optical scan as long as it's a dot .stl, we can import into the program. Uh, the intraoral program and uh, optical scanner is a scanner of the, uh, of the plaster cast, for example. So all these can be included at the level of the image treatment. And finally, you can have a dot axis, a dot axis, which will allow you to go back and forth from the planning to the image treatment. If you did not treat enough the image, because you were uh, in, uh, very busy, you had no time to do it. You can go back from the dot axis and you can reshape your image a second time. So this is the way it is working. And this is the way you can enter into a program. You have to understand that. So I have been designing what we used to call the intelligent panoramic curve. When you want to draw an nerve, okay, the big difficulties is that you go from one slide to another slide. You need to change the position. You need to find it again, find the nerve, make a click again and again. So instead of that, we've been doing that in a different way. Look at that. Plus, to make a new, um, a, a new uh, reconstruction, panoramic reconstruction, one, two, three, four, five, and six. This is enough for the lower. Don't put more, not needed. And then based on this, you are going to move one. This is the middle one. And doing that, you show at the bottom of the image here, you see the pan, the, uh, this, uh, this image is going to show you here that you have the nerve and you will be able to draw the nerve in one time in only one image. Okay, this is a big advantage of that. So based on this now, we go to the way to build that 3D object. I explained that to you and we're going to see that together again, because in one time it might be a little fast. So I want you to spend time to really understand what we are doing. You have a custom way to do it here, where we, we define the higher and the lower uh, value. We have the prosthesis, we have the teeth, we will have the bone, and all this is coming by default for the upper and the lower with different values. In this case, can, can you mute your, your microphone, please? So we are doing that at the level of 500 threshold. And we are doing that. Um, and we should. So now what we are going to do, we are going to design. Can you close your microphone, please? Can you mute everyone? Okay, so now what you see here is that um, we have been able to change the threshold. This threshold has been done I 500 and this threshold we've been changing and we've been making a, a, a new threshold for this reconstruction. So let's go to the next step. And at the next step, I am going to have now two masks. I have the bone and I have this, and I'm going to make a new one. So I start from the denture. Why the denture is important? It's because it's showing to me 
the surface of the soft tissue. And, I, and this was the opening of the uh, minimally invasive procedures. And we started that, uh, we, we did the first case, case in, in 2003. So now I'm going to separate the teeth from the base plate. And I have the teeth in red, the base plate in blue and the bone in yellow. Why do I need that? Because if I can toggle off the base plate, I can plan my implant in 3D and I can make the implant emerge in the center of the tooth because I will keep the teeth and I will remove the base plate because I don't use it for that. I need the base plate for the guide. I don't need the base plate for the planning of implant. I need the teeth for the planning. I don't need the teeth for the base plate, for the, um, for the guide, okay? So I use what I want to use based on these different images. Can you do that with the program you have in your CBCT? No, it is impossible to do. You have to understand it. If you don't want to do it, keep on working on the way you were. But if you want to go to computer-guided implantology, you have no choice. You need to move to a different level of uh, manipulating the images. So we, we are on that. I'm going, I'm going to move now and the reconstruction on soft tissue and all, all that. So let me go back. Let me go back now to different cases. I am going to show you some scattered upper to understand that it's not always very easy to do. Scattered lower and, and full lower free implants, easy implants and more advanced implants that we are doing um, uh, here also in, in Dubai. So let me, let me show you uh, that. We are going to uh, go to real cases now. So we open the case one after the other. I, I want to show you the reality of what we're doing, okay? So you will, you will understand that in some cases, it's difficult to uh, get a, a good result. And uh, we are working on these cases. And, and in some cases, we are spending hours to try to save the, the case of the patient of the, uh, of the dentist because uh, some cases are very difficult. Look at this case. So this case is a case that we receive like this, okay? So you look at the scattered images, look at all the scattered, okay? And the dentist says, okay, please uh, send me a surgical guide. How do you want to send a surgical guide based on that? So you see, we have to clean up that. We clean up and it will take hours. So we start like this and we go to the final. After clicking and removing that layer by layer, so I'm going to show you what it means layer by layer. We go to image, we go to uh, that, and this is a layer. So I use an, uh, an eraser, I erase that, okay? And I go to another layer up, and down, I use an eras, I use an eras, and millimeter by millimeter, I remove all the scattered images. Again, 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 and again, I remove all that. So they have been doing that. And if we go to the plan now, so uh, uh, Arshad is going to show you what is the result of what he's been doing. So starting from this crazy image we had in 3D, we went to that. So we have here a series of implants in a bridge with a lot of metal inside and the roots. And this is one, um, one uh, mask. At the bottom, we have one tooth that they want to uh, remove at the end of the surgery. So, and they wanted that to be planned. So this is also a bridge, which is another mask. And we've been planning three implants to save the case. And in one time, he's going to remove the implant, remove the, uh, the roots and place the implant with a, a, a guide laying on, on the teeth and on the mucosa, okay? So for that, we need to import an object and uh, we need to work on an uh, overlaying of the plaster cast over this image. So this is to illustrate that when you are coming from a dicom which has been taking on a CBCT 
with a lot of metal and a lot of scattered images, it will become very difficult to be accurate, okay? So let's see another case. So you will understand what's the, uh, what's the objective of what uh, we are doing every day. Uh, it is very challenging and in some cases it's easier, but all the time we, we need to be the more accurate. Accuracy is what we have in mind at every step when we are doing that. And I'm going to show you uh, what about the accuracy of overlaying uh, a cast over, uh, over uh, a die cut. So let's see, let's see another case. So you see that image has been treated, implants have been placed, and this is uh, another case on, on the bone. Uh, we have the image of, uh, of that. So this is the case treated. You see it's more clean. But when we clean, we remove details. So we need to remove details that we don't, don't worry. So, and this is laying on the bone and on this very simple guide, the patient, the, the dentist is very uh, easily placed these two implants and the implants will not go inside the sinus. You see the sinus opening here and we don't see any implant coming inside, okay? So doing that, it will be very helpful for the dentist to work in a good way and place several teeth on these two implants. So uh, let's go to another case. Another case will be uh, a four upper case. We just show you cases so you understand the limitation of what we can do. Huh? Uh, if the image that we receive is not good, we cannot make it good. We can, we can clean it as much as we can based on our clinical experience. We can do things, but there is a limitation for sure. So here, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, show you. These are the teeth. All the teeth will be removed in one time. So the implants have been planned. The teeth, and you see the implant is angulated implants because we want to put the teeth on this position, which is the number 26, but we have the sinus. We don't want to make a sinus lift. So we angle the position and the position of the implant will come exactly where we want to be. So these are the teeth. These are, this is the implant, which is going to replace the central incisor. All the teeth here, this is almost lost. It is not in the bone anymore. So we're going to remove all the teeth and place the implant in one time. And this case was done uh, for the immediate implant placement. And now Ashad is showing to you, um, it is showing to you the, uh, the way the guide has been designed. So after extraction, after bone remodeling in some cases, so we can build up some guys to remodel the bone and then some guys to place implant after bone remodeling. And the implants are placed and immediately the implants are placed. And in some cases, we can immediately place um, uh, a, a temporary uh, prosthesis on that. And um, we started the, this procedure uh, 23 years ago. So we we are not discovering and, and rebuilding and reinventing the wheel today. Um, this is a long process existing since a long time. I can show you cases which were done in, in 2000. So it's exactly the same today. And we do that and, um, and we, we do this and we have the, uh, the position of the guide, the position of the, uh, uh, the, the plaster cast, which uh, has been used to overlay and to, uh, and to work on that in a, in a very accurate uh, position. Let me show you something. I would like to show you something here. So here, uh, I have been selecting the imported object. What is the imported object? It is the, um, it is the plaster cast. So you see that the plaster cast has been overlaid over the CT scan. And you see the image of the surface of the plaster cast, and you see how accurate is the positioning of the overlaying the plaster cast over the teeth. So we go around and we check that here we have no teeth, we've been removing the teeth. And in the position where we have the teeth, uh, the plaster cast is absolutely very, very accurate. As you can see, the line is overlaying the surface of the canine of the incisors and of the teeth on right side and left side. So we are obsessed by the accuracy. 
okay? And if there is a mistake, well, we need to understand where the mistake is coming from. It can come from a wrong overpositioning of the plaster cast over the model, or the model is wrong. The model is wrong because it's broken. And you can have things like this. So be careful. All the steps are very important when you are working in images. So let's go to another case. And we go one by one. So it takes time, it's another case. So you understand that you are the tool now. I, I have been giving you the tool to understand what is a conversion, what is a segmentation, what is the difference in between a spiral CT and a CBCT, the way to uh, overlay a cast over um, a, a, a dicom, the way to overlay a dicom over an other dicom. And now you have all the tools you can work on that to make your case. If you don't want to do it like me, me, I don't do my reconstruction, I can ask, um, uh, Arshad to do it, and Arshad is making all this job. In some cases, it's taking a lot of time, and we have to understand that um, uh, me, I, I have no time to do all that. In some cases, I can do it immediately because because it's easy and fast. But in most cases, you have a, you have a, a lot of uh, different um, uh, metals in in the patient's mouth and all. So let's have a look at this. This is a case. Um, which which is done. We do several cases like this. I have been starting making a zygoma implant in 2000, 23 three years ago, and uh, still some people are are doing this. Uh, this is a case coming from India, and um, and um, the the dentist has been planning planning uh, a zygoma implant. The zygoma implant is coming here with an angulated abutment. The implant will emerge in the center of the teeth. Uh, the, the, the guide is stabilized in the zygoma eminence, and the guide in this case is going to go outside of the sinus on both case, right case and, and left case. I don't want to make a, a full um, lecture on the way we, we plan implant, but this is typically a, a kind of uh, uh, implant placement like we used to do 23 years old, and, um, and we used to immediately load the case. So the case was loaded like this, and Arshad is going to show you more about this case. He's going to show you how uh, he's been uh, doing uh, surgical uh, guide. You, you have the guide, uh, Arshad? Okay, so this is the guide. And you can see in the guide that uh, the guide is done in one piece. And this guide is not only guiding implants to place implants at the level of the teeth, but at the level of the zygoma. Okay, so... Uh, the dentist can do that in, um, in two ways. In this way, he wanted the guide laying on the bone, okay? But we did the same kind of, um, of uh, implant placement, laying on the mucosa with only four millimeter holes to place these uh, implants uh, in the center and in the uh, zygoma eminence on right side and left side. So this is the, uh, the way uh, we, can, um, we can work. So uh, I just want to show you that there is no limitation in what we can do. We can, we can go from very simple cases where we replace one, two, to much more complicated cases. So I want to finish on a case, uh, not for you to do it for, uh, for sure, but um, to open your mind of what is the extension of what we can do with computer-guided implantology program, as long as we can set up many things in a different way. So uh, this new case, uh, is going to be a case uh, done uh, in uh, done in in Saudi for a patient, and I show you the case for a patient like this. So what you see here is that you have a, a cancer tumor here, and you have an impacted tooth here. So the cancer tumor is is here. So a lot of teeth are going to be removed, but uh, the uh, uh, the surgeon said, "I need I need some help. I need some help to to know how to uh, how to remove that without cutting too much bone." So um, we've been doing a mask of the tumor, and you see the mask of the tumor is growing inside here. Okay, it's going inside, and it's going outside. So. In this case, 
Arshad has been doing a guide um, and the guy was built up to um, was built up to uh, to be attached on the existing good bone and 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 this is the the, the guide and 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 there is a location of where he should cut the surgeon should cut here he's been going to remove these teeth cut here cut here is guided to cut remove this tooth and all this will go out okay and of course what we can do, we didn't do it in this case, but we can do, we can do a metal frame, which is going to be screw retained here and it's going to uh, be stabilized in the chin in front. So doing that, you understand that uh, there is no limit in working in computer guided implantology. And, and, and this, um, this program is going to really help you doing things at the highest level, okay? And this is what we want. We, we want to give you the good help to do the best things for your patients. And this is the aim of uh, what we want to do. So I'm going to end on that. I am going to end on a conclusion of what I've been talking to you. So um, right now, uh, we, um, we can say that uh, we, we've been going through uh, the data uh, that will be different if you take a CBCT or a spiral CT and you understand the difference. Uh, the fresh oil um, that will be different in both cases. You cannot, um, uh, you will have more uh, scattered images in CBCT and you will have limitation if you are working with CBCT with a narrow field of view. So that's point number one. The point number two is the conversion. As I said to you, what is the conversion? Is the conversion from the 2D and in most of uh, the program that you're working on, you work on 2D. You don't work on, C, on, on 3D because you work in volume rendering and you need to work in a surface rendering. And working in a surface rendering, okay, will give you a lot of new options like I've been illustrating that uh, to you. So the big advantage is segmentation can allow you toggling on and off mask and making extractions and removing cancer and, and doing whatever you want to do. And all this is possible because uh, you have the tool to do it. You cannot do that if you work with a program which is delivered with your CBCT, it's impossible. This is what I wanted to tell you to be very clear about what you can do and what you cannot do. So you can either select to make conversion and segmentation yourself. So me, I don't do it or ask, to do it as a service. So me, I plan my implant because I am responsible for that, but all the rest, cleaning images and doing all that is done by ANPA because I don't want to be involved in that. I don't need that. It's like when I take impression and I send the impression to make a, a crown, I don't want to design the crown, okay? The crown is designed by the lab technician, not by me, okay? If I like that, I can do it, but I, I don't want to spend time for that. It's exactly the same thing which is happening to me when I'm making uh, a case, all my cases are made in computer guided implantology. I work, I send the conversion, the segmentation, and I, um, I, I, I do the planning and I, I uh, consider that the planning is, is done. Okay, so everything is done, all is fine. I thank you for your uh, kind attention. I thank you, Arshad, for his, his fantastic work on images. Uh, since he's been doing thousands of cases, he knows all the points that will help us to drive in a very secure way for our patient. 